Hi everyone and welcome to uh, get Start Your Career in Cloud Computing, another event from the London Digital Jobs and Skills Hub. My name's Olympia, I'm the Director of the London Digital Jobs and Skills Hub and we're here to help more unemployed pe people in London access jobs in the um, the tech sector. Um, particularly today we're going to be talking about cloud computing, what it is, uh, how you get started in it and uh, the different uh, things that you might want to think about if you're considering a, ca a career in cloud computing. I'm speaking to you today from uh, the Hub office in Hoxton. Um, it'd be great to hear where you are watching from. Uh, if you want to share share your location in the comments, there's plenty of chance for you to ask questions. So please do ask those and we will get to as many of those as we can. Um, there's we're going to be hearing today from a few different people so yeah there's lots of chance for you to get involved and ask questions um i'll also be sharing our email address so if you're watching on catch up hello to you um and if we don't ans ask, answer your question please do send it over and we'd be more than happy to help so um as I said, this is an event hosted by the London Digital Jobs and Skills Hub. We're a project supported by and funded by the Mayor of London and the Greater London Authority. We are a collection of different training and support partners led by Generation, who we'll be hearing from later. And among our other partners are QA Limited, who we'll also be hearing from. And we have a wealth of different boot camp and apprenticeship providers, as well as people that can offer additional support to people that need uh, help. So uh, we, we think that digital and tech roles are a great fit for more people than uh, we currently have in the industry. That's because they offer good jobs with good salaries. There's something to suit every different kind of person. And most importantly, our message is that you don't need a computer science degree to get started. If you already have one, great, we can help you. But um, you don't need to have one if you uh, don't already, we can help you get started in a role. The starting salaries in London are at least £24,000 and there are great progression routes to help you get a higher salary within a very short space of time. Now I mentioned that there's something for everyone. These are some little statements to help people um, understand what some of the roles that the, the hub can help people into. So for example, some of our partners run digital marketing courses and that might be right for you if you have spent more time making an email look perfect or you've thought a lot about what social media posts you're sharing. Digital marketers um, look at the analytics that those social media platforms provide and use that to help refine their campaigns. If data is more your thing, even more than, um, than using it to analyze social media point posts, perhaps you've made a spreadsheet to figure out what type of car insurance is best for you, then you might want to think about a role as a data analyst or data engineer. If you often do logic puzzles like Sudoku or um, those ones where you have to figure out who murdered who, then uh, if you have that suggests you have a logical brain, so uh, a, cyber, a role as a cybersecurity analyst might be a good one for you. If you're the go-to person in your family to fix broken phones or laptops, you might be absolutely destined for a role in IT support. And if you describe yourself as creative and logical, then looking into software and web development could be a really good fit for you. But today we're going to be talking about cloud computing and you'll hear lots more about what kind of person it suits. The very basic statement I've put here is that if you always try to keep up to date with the latest tools and like work, working as part of a team, but we're gonna be going into that in a lot more detail today. Now I mentioned that the um, hub partners offer lots of different ways into tech and digital careers. Today we're going to be hearing about some skills boot camps from Generation and from QA. Our partners also offer apprenticeships, they offer college courses and short courses, and there is career coaching to help with the employability skills if you already have the skills to start your career in cloud computing but you're struggling to get that first role then we can help with um, interview practice, CV advice and one-on-one -on -one coaching. So today 
uh, actually, just before we look at what we've got coming up from today, we've got someone watching from East London. Hello. Uh, not just down the road from me. Another person just down the road is Simone in Stoke Newington. Hi. And uh, Marcin in Welling Garden City. Great to hear from you. Um, so yes, today we are going to be looking at what cloud computing is. We're going to be hearing from a couple of people that have started uh, their own journeys and, con and are quite far into their own journeys in cloud computing. Then, and uh, what it's like being a cloud engineer, um, what your day-to-day -day tasks are, what, what work is like to help you envisage whether this is something that's right for you. And finally, as I mentioned, we'll be hearing about cloud computing boot camps and apprenticeships. So I'd like to welcome on our first guest, who is uh, Ken Odibe. Um, hi, Ken, how are you? Hello, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, yeah, so do you want to start by introducing yourself? Um, yeah, what is it that you that you do? Sure, thank you. Um, as mentioned, my name is Kenneth Otibe. I head up the cloud operations team at my company. Um, we're a Microsoft Gold partner. Um, I actually built out a cloud team from scratch, you know, um, so, and you know, interviewing people and um, created structure within the team so team of devops engineers um, cloud engineers and solutions architects uh, in the team which kind of kind of gave us a solid infrastructure to move forward and deal with all the challenges and projects uh, that we take on on a day-to-day -day basis um, some of the projects that we've done uh, and completed in the past includes uh, itv um, you know, the daytime shows that you see, so Loose Women, um, Lunchtime News, um, you know, this morning, um, we actually lifted and shifted that into the cloud. I say lift and shift, but we've actually built out a cloud infrastructure that allows those shows to be hosted in the Azure cloud uh, platform and broadcasted live from there, um, which is a really, really big win for us. Um, brought about you know positive comments from Microsoft's uh, CTO for media and entertainment so that's a that's a big one for us in terms of my um, qualifications um, yeah so I've got uh, so I'm certified across Azure so uh, Azure Solutions Architect expert um, AWS Solutions Architect Citrix Cloud um, ITOL VMware um, as well as Hyper-V and all the other um, uh, on-prem uh you know architectures as well uh i have to mention as your virtual cloud as well um avd um so i have your virtual desktop which is uh, a tool that allows you to kind of provision um virtual desktops in the cloud and allow remote access um so yeah that's that's my background in a nutshell um i tend to deal with large um, enterprises as well with the team and yeah Amazing. Now there was a lot of jargon there, or, yes. or sort of technical language. <laughs> I may sorry, not, may but you understand it, um, which is fine. But I, yeah. I, you know, it'd be great to sort of try and uh, unpick and understand a few of those. Could we go right back to basics? And so, can you give me a sort of um, super simple explanation of what cloud computing or cloud engineering is, please? Sure. The basic way of looking at cloud computing is you've got to look at it from an on-prem uh, perspective. When I say on-prem, I'm talking about, you know, um, your the good old days where you had server rooms and comms rooms and things like that. Now, where cloud, cloud computing stems from is instead of you having to do deal with the headache of having a comms room, uh, essentially a room where you have to pay for power, cooling, um security uh, and all that sort of thing so in terms of management cabling you actually pay uh, a third party provider called the public cloud to do all that for you it's exactly the same as what you have in a data center now a, a data center is a more advanced version of what i just mentioned in that instead of having it in-house you go to another provider that will have a large communications room that will have a collection of servers is called co-location where you have uh, a bunch of racks and they all do that for you so you have your own pod where you have all your servers and they manage all the cooling and compute for you um but to do that it's quite expensive and to in order to have high availability which is essentially the 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 the, the uh, mechanism to allow um systems to be able to fail over in the event of a failure right 
Um, you do tend to pay a lot of money when you go with um, data center and co-location providers. Um, and you've, most times, because what they actually do is they give you a server rack and you have to populate it. So if something goes down, you have to pay for a service which allows someone to go there from the, that company, the data center provider, to fix that. Or you'll have to drive down there uh, as an engineer to, to resolve that. Um, whereas if it's hosted in the cloud, everything's managed for you. It means that these same co-location and the data centers are managed by larger companies who do everything for you in terms of the back end. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're basically responsible for the security um, of the cloud. So you're, whereas you're responsible for the security in the cloud, if that makes sense. So you only have to look, you know, you, it's, it's like a pay-as-you-go model, basically. You have a pay-as-you-go model where you pay for what you use. If something go down, goes down, you don't have to go to a data center. You could just log into a portal. You could do it programmatically using tools such as, uh, yeah. you know, um, Terraform or, or Ansible or, or ARM templates or depending on what, um, you know, tool you want to use you can actually manage and deploy everything using a script um, and you have multiple failovers they're called regions and um, within regions you have availability zones you have lo edge locations if you're talking aws um, so these things are basically there for you to pay and use so if you wanted to say for example if my if all my infrastructure goes down in london i want everything to automatically fail over to um I would say west europe in in holland that is available for you. But if you wanted to do that outside the cloud, you'd have to pay another company to manage that data center for you. So it's really, really, really expensive. And what the cloud is, is essentially giving uh, customers and giving um, people the ability to manage everything from a single pane of glass, where you, you, you can pay for what you want in terms of high availability, retention, mm -hmm. and data analysis and that sort of thing, yeah. And so would every business have a sort of I understand that you're saying that they all have kind of a, there's the back end, which is might, might have lots of different businesses on it. Would every business have a unique design of the system that they that is right for their business? So you mentioned that you've been setting up the thing for um, ITV, for example. Would that mean you have to design the way their bit of the cloud works? that would be then very different to the way that another bits of the business absolutely work yes so open. each what we're seeing in the cloud uh, at the moment and not just cloud but any environment is that every customer will have its own bespoke um, way of doing things a bespoke way of setting things up so it's, it won't just be a case of spinning up a few computers in the cloud that some customers may want to have you know uh, data retention policies some customers may want to have an additional layer of security so maybe having uh you know as your terms maybe having um you know an application gateway that does layer seven something called layer seven filtering where um that provides you with web application firewalls and capabilities such as that other companies may just want an azure virtual desktop in the cloud to just be able to um you know uh to work i'll mm. give you for example i you mentioned itv itv needed a system that allowed them to um have that high fidelity and low latency in terms of color rich picture so sure. as you know from a graphics point of view as an editor when you hit a space bar it needs to stop at a particular frame and that's the experience they get from using a physical laptop so to for us to allow that we had to basically go for something called um, high graphical performance uh, units, so GPU interfaces that allow, uh, that pr basically provide high um, resolution uh, that split content. Split second, um, yeah, okay. Exactly, that, that makes, that fits that requirement, whereas other customers may just want a standard Windows 10 machine to work with. So. And so as the cloud engineer and maybe we could talk a little bit about what the different sort of roles are you mentioned that you've hired quite a broad team when you're being trained in cloud it sounds like there is quite a lot of um interface with customers and with with under so you're understanding their needs is that is that the role of of someone that's say trained in in azure like you are or would that be then someone that that is more trained in customer service sort of tell me a little bit about those different roles and you like how much is it sitting in front of a computer and how much is it talking with people 
Yeah, I mean, there are various, like you mentioned, rightly mentioned, there are various roles. So the DevOps engineers, they tend to do the automation and orchestration of, of systems. So in terms of not using a graphical user interfaces, they use things like scripts to develop and build systems. So it would um, look like one of those hacker screens in a movie with loads of like lines of code on it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, so sometimes, yes, you do black and white screens and running scripts. And, and <laughs> Not like green, yeah. like the Matrix. What? <laughs> they have movies lied to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's DevOps engineering. Um, the cloud engineers can do a bit of DevOps engineering, but they're more, you know, they understand a lot more about the architecture of the, right. of the system. So how compute network and storage works. And then you have the solutions architects. The solutions architects, most solutions architects have come from a cloud engineering background. So they have an understanding of how uh, the infrastructure and the development side of things work, but they're more uh, into the um, uh, the designing of the, uh, of the environment and looking at uh, coming up with high level designs and low level designs, looking at the very neat, nitty gritty intersects and interjoints and of how it would work and presenting it to technical and non-technical people in a way that both parties understand. Um, so they tend to be more customer facing and that's where I've come from as well, from a solutions architecture background. They tend to be more customer facing in terms of understanding customer requirements, presenting it, developing it, coming up with that high level design and then passing it on to the DevOps. I'm working with the DevOps and cloud engineers to make sure that those But you said that they sorry uh you said that they've got that route in through cloud computing so someone if you're thinking about the journey into these roles the way mm -hmm. for most of them I'm, I'm hearing is that they would go start by sort of training in cloud computing and then specialize into sort of either solutions architecture or yes, a cloud engineer absolutely. or devops or or, do or DevOps, DevOps yeah. To, yeah okay interesting. Yeah. yeah yeah and what kind of person does it suit what kind of colleagues do you see around you know what what are you looking for when you hire that kind of the, yeah what kind of person works in it as a cloud engineer that's a great question i tend to look for enthusiastic people uh people people that are willing to learn um i think that's key um i don't expect everyone to have all the certifications like myself or uh you know other people but at least there are some basic certifications that i, I expect um one to have um, such as entry level, for example, in AWS, AWS practitioner, for example, um, and possibly working towards an AWS solutions architect um, associate. Well, for uh, Azure, I'll be looking at AZ900 with Azure fundamentals and uh, Azure administrator um, um, certification as well. Um, you just have to have a, a passion to learn, I'd, I'd say. You mm -hmm. have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to take time. I mean, I still study. I'm studying for to renew my AWS um, uh, Solutions Architect exam uh, certifications that's due next month. And I have to, obviously, with kids, I have, I have married with two kids, I have to wake up earlier just to get my, you know, an hour on, or a couple of hours in of, of studying. And that's, that's, that's what I look for. People that are just willing to, to develop themselves in terms of learning and being that, having a can-do attitude and just having sure. a positive mindset set of um, wanting to learn about all the new stuff coming out. But all of that new stuff sounds like, so So in that earlier slide where I was, um, you know, describing the different roles, I mentioned something about um, you like staying on top of the latest technology. It sounds like with cloud computing, there's always stuff developing. So if you like, if you're someone yeah. that likes to keep, keep stretching yourself and, um, and yeah, developing new, learning new things, that sounds like it's a, it could be a good fit for you. Could you just, yes. um, Tell us a little bit about your own journey um, into into where you've got now. Sure. Before we will go on to Garrett, who's got a after this, we'll go on to Garrett, who's got a had a different route in. But it'd be great to hear yours, please. Sure. Yeah. Um, I've always been a tech, technical person. I mean, from uh, sixth form, I was good in IT. Um, you know, and rather instead of going through or going down the uh, A levels route, I went went down the vocational route so I went to Croydon College some of you may know Croydon College and I was I We've basically got, we started in from Croydon actually Eamon sorry hi yeah <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I went to Croydon College I studied um, I think it's advanced vocational education in information and communication technology which I really enjoyed 
Um, and then I went to university and I studied um, information systems, um, came out with a 2-1, just about missed out on the first. Um, and I was able to get a job. I think I graduated in July and then I got a job in September as an IT analyst. And it, going back to what I mentioned earlier, it's just having that passion for IT and just wanting mm -hmm. to learn, right? So just um, built up my way. I think I yeah, started off as an IT analyst, uh, which anyone can get into, by the way. Um, and then built up my way to, um, you know, getting a new uh, a new role as an IT engineer. And then I then became a senior infrastructure engineer. And then from there, I just, that's when the cloud started coming alive. And I thought, hmm, OK, this is really good. This is where everything's moving into. And then I started looking. I went. I think I went on LinkedIn and I saw someone that had all this, literally all the certs across <laughs> Azure AWS. And I was like, yes, that's going to be my mentor now. And I just followed like the steps and read up on how he got to where he got to. And I started off, I think, with my AWS uh, practitioner exam and then did the solutions architect one. And because I've come from a Microsoft background, I thought, OK, I need to venture into Microsoft um, side of things and to Azure got all the certifications done and basically keep doing certifications. And the more you do, you, you know, you, you tend to then say, okay, I've mastered this area. What next? Where do I need to focus on? Do I need to focus on the solutions architecture part, cloud engineering part? I think everyone starts off as a cloud engineer, really, unless you've kind of studied programming at um, university, then uh, if you've done things like Java and C++ and things like that, then you may just want to go into DevOps because it's more about scripting and automation. Right. Um, so I went then went to become, I think my first role was a cloud engineer. Um, yeah, and then became a senior and then principal cloud engineer and then uh, heading up to heading up the, the, the team. So so that's yeah. that's my, my journey really. Amazing. Um you mentioned that you've been doing quite a lot of but we're gonna bring on Garrett in just a second to talk about his um journey in and experiences of cloud. Before we do that, you mentioned that you've been hiring quite a few people. Is are you able to give us any idea of the sorts of salary ranges that you're talking from particularly entry level salaries, but you know what the top level salaries also uh, might might be? Sure, yeah. I mean it depends on the um position that one actually applies for. I mean Entry level as a cloud engineer, I think you'd be looking at between 35 to 40k. Um, that's if you've got some sort of IT experience, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, then yeah, I think about 30k. But okay. if you've got IT experience, you'd be looking at about 40. Yeah. Um, if you're coming in as a cloud engineer, an experienced cloud engineer, you'd be looking at between 60,000 pounds to 70,000 pounds. If you're coming in as a solutions architect, then that's seven thousand pounds and above amazing well amazing salaries thank you so much um yeah we're gonna uh, ken if you don't mind sticking around um sure. hopefully we'll i think we'll get some questions in from some of the audience um and uh yeah thank you so much for for giving us that great introduction to cloud computing um but now i'd like to welcome on garad yusuf um garad uh is joining us where actually whereabouts are you joining us from garad um, Enfield, North London. Enfield, amazing. Yeah. Um, hi, thank you so much for joining us. So um, I, I know that you had a slightly different journey in uh, to cloud computing um, than Ken, but yeah. why don't we sort of, I, I'm interested to hear, well, actually, let's start there. Tell us, tell us your journey uh, into cloud computing. Yeah, um, so um, I've had a different journey to, to Ken. Um, so I went to uni, studied um, civil engineering um, at City University, um, did my bachelor's in civil engineering and then did a master's in structural engineering afterwards. Um, so I was proper um, on that engineering, structural engineering route. Um, so, and then the p pandemic hit, um, found it a bit difficult to, to, to get a job um, as a structural engineer. Um, eventually, I ended up landing a a consultant structural engineer um, trainee position role. Um, so I was doing that for a bit. Um, but on the side, I was learning um, Python scripting and um, coding and things like that, which I already developed those skills um, at university, um, doing um, doing programming like uh, MATLAB and things like that. So um, I already had um, some skills in programming. Um, so then once I started developing those skills, I really wanted to find a career that I could use these skills in. Um, 
and 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 a career that wouldn't just limit me to um simply programming. I didn't want I didn't want to be a full time programmer. I wanted to use uh, you, you didn't implement want the those green skills. screen of uh, of code nah, running down. No, no, no. Not, in, not, not any of that matrix <laughs> stuff. It, it gives me a headache looking at that. But um, <laughs> but yeah, um, once I developed those skills, um, I really wanted to find a field that that allows me to learn and allows me to implement those skills that I learned. So I came across um, cloud computing. Um, I wasn't quite sure what cloud computing was at the time. Um, so I had to um, message some people on LinkedIn. They started providing me with resources and things like that that could help me develop um, skills that will eventually get me into, um, land me a job basically. So once I started building a community on LinkedIn, um, people started um, helping me um, provided me with resources and things to learn so I started practically learning those skills th uh, theoretically first sorry and then after that I would do um, projects on, on on the side so with Python I'd, I'd learn basics of Python and then um, carry out a project on that and then upload it on my github repository and things like that and then i will do that for loads of other uh, loads of other skills um, such as Terraform or Docker Kubernetes and things like that um, so once I felt like I had a decent knowledge, um, theoretically wise, um, on these technologies, I decided to go. I uh, decided to learn um, a particular AWS, um, a cloud computing um, flavor, as they call it. So I started um, the AWS Cloud Practitioner certific certification, which Ken mentioned was the first certification. Um, managed to get that certification done. Um, then I basically created like a portfolio of things of projects that um I done on my spare time. Mm. Once I compiled all of that together, I started applying for jobs. Um and about a year ago, or just under a year ago, um I managed to um get a associate cloud engineer position at um Ancorus, which is my current position at the moment now. So yeah, that's my journey. Amazing. So much um, independent study and in you sound so driven, but actually that really sounds like it's echoing what Ken was saying about cloud computing really suiting people that want to keep stretching themselves and want to keep at the at the front of mm -hmm. um, technical technical developments. Amazing. With those yeah. projects that you were doing, were you just sort of dreaming them up by yourself? Were you speaking to friends and uh, businesses, local businesses or whatever for ideas? Tell us a little bit about how you sort of came up with those projects. Yeah, so um, some of them were based on things that were previously um, done by other um, engineers that, for example, they would get their projects and they'd put them on LinkedIn. I'd have a read of that, see if I can implement that project and add my own twist to the, um, uh, add my own twist, twist basically to it. Yeah. And then, um, for example, I might find like a sample, a bit of script on, on like a GitHub repository, see what I could do with this particular application create my own sort of, add my own sort of twist to it and then deploy it on um, AWS for example or Google Cloud or any other uh, cloud service. Amazing. One of the things I was hoping to do in this um, in this event is is really help people understand what cloud computing is because I think there's a lot of um, uh, we sort of, I think everyone has a vague nebulous, that's a cloud yeah. joke, uh, a nebulous idea of, uh, sorry, of what it is. Um, what do you say to people if you meet them at a party? How would you describe your job? Um, so usually, <laughs> it's a, yeah. It's a fun conversation at a party, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, putting it simply, um, I'd say cloud computing is basically um, delivering um, computing services um, through the internet so these services could be such as um, servers um, storage databases um, networks networking um, analytics and that sort of stuff so put, putting it vaguely and simply I'll probably say that's that's what it is uh, yeah. in terms of what we basically do is um, what my team do at Ancorus is um, a lot of it will be consultation so um speaking to clients about what sort of stuff that they what their requirements are um getting those requirements trying to implement that um on the cloud um 
You'd also do a lot of um, monitoring and logging um, to track the performance of their particular applications. Okay. Um, we'd also do some tr troubleshooting and things like that. And, and then we'd also um, manage the applications for them and things mm -hmm. like that. So, I, and I think that's quite an interesting um, uh, challenge to the way that a lot of people think about sort of tech jobs is that they are just sat in front of a computer, not interacting with the outside world, sort of lost in that world of code. But it yeah. sounds to me like you're, you are interacting with people a lot you're doing that sort of active problem solving yeah. would you say what you know talk us through a typical day that you you would have yeah um so as a team what we've implemented is we have like um a thing called um, a jira board so we basically put all of the issues all of the tasks that need to be done um on that particular board um so we have a list of things that we need that, that tasks we need to go through um, whether that would be internal tasks or um, customer tasks. So once we, we've looked at that list, um, we usually allocate tasks and things like that. So we'd work towards in, um, towards meeting that particular goal or um, finishing that particular project. And that's how, that's how we usually work um, as a team. But those tasks, um, they're assigned individually, but more often than not, you're not working on your own. So you're not left in the dark. Um, mm -hmm. So as a team, we, we try to help each other as, as much as possible. If someone has um, a lot of work to, go, to, to, um, to get through, someone else will come, um, help them out a bit, um, ease the load on them and things like that. So um, you do develop a lot of uh, people skills as well in terms of um, asking questions and uh, also when it comes to um, liaising with um, clients and things like that. So you do develop those skills. You're not just focused on, on, your, on your screen. Nice. And what is it that you like about your job? Um, the main thing is um, you're not always doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. each project is different. Each requirement is different. You might take bits and pieces from each particular project that you're working on, but more often than not, they're, they're different, um, which is good. You don't want to be doing the same thing um, over and over again every single day. So that's, that, that's one good thing. Um, another thing is, uh, as Ken said, um, the cloud is always developing. You always have an opportunity to learn. So the good thing about my company now is that they um, they really push us to, to get more certifications, to spend time self-learning and self-training as well. So that's, that's, that's some of the benefits. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And are there any things that you, you know, what, what, are there any downsides to the job? Um, I wouldn't say downsides like that, but... Um, one of the things that I do find a little bit frustrating is uh, when you're basically stuck. Because what happens is sometimes you do hit a brick wall, um, but then you do have um, team members that will help you get through that. There's always um, resources online and YouTube and things like that. Um, the good thing about cloud computing and IT in general, you're not you're not always you're not, you're not reinventing the wheel. So mm -hmm. the the issue that you're facing, someone has already faced those issues. So there's loads of like forums, Stack Overflow and things like that online where you can find someone that's had similar issues and things like that. But I think that yeah. when I started working with um, software developers and uh, and, and similar, um, that was one of the things that really struck me was how often people just look stuff up on the internet. And it felt a bit like, yeah. is that is this like a life hack? Is this cheating <laughs> at life? But actually, it's totally fine, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, at, at the beginning, it does, it, it does, it does feel like... Um, you're a bit of a fraud or you do yeah. get a bit of an imposter syndrome <laughs> but that's not the case that's not the case um even the seniors are always researching stuff so um yeah amazing um we're gonna we've had quite a few questions in from our viewers which is great so i'm gonna bring ken back on um to uh join us to answer those please hey ken um hey. before we get into that though um now ken you mentioned that you're currently mainly working with microsoft azure um, but you also did a bit of AWS. Garad, you mentioned that you started with AWS. What platform are you currently using now? So uh, at Ancorus, we are the um, we are Google partners. So we mm -hmm. use um, Google Cloud um, only really at the moment. So yeah. it's only Google Cloud that we use. I mean, the, we're set up on screen a bit like we're going to have a, a right royal rumble. Um, <laughs> what uh, what are the diff sort of tell us a little bit about those different. Um, uh, different sort of um, 
platforms. We've had a question from Luke in Islington. Um, should I follow one platform? Should I spread myself out? What What are the pros and cons of each of them? T tell us a little bit about about that kind of thing, please. Um, in from from my experience, um, yeah. in terms of um, the user interface, um, I feel like the GCP or Google Cloud is a, a bit more user friendly compared to AWS and Azure. Um, also, um, GCP focuses um, quite a bit on machine learning and AI, um, data analytics and things like that. So if you're into that sort of stuff and you want to, um, you know, bro broaden your skills on SQL and BigQuery and things like that, um, Google provide a lot of projects and training um, on machine learning and um, AI data analytics and things like that. So that's what, that's some of the advantages of using um, GCP up there. So yeah. you're saying Google, Google, fight, fight, fight. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I have to I have to find my corner. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, <laughs> what do you say to that? Yeah, I mean they're all the same. I mean they all they all offer the same um, capabilities. I think it's just the the factors that decide what uh, public cloud platform you go with is cost um, and uh, services. So, for example, if you're a Microsoft house and you've got Office three six five and you're using Azure AD it would make sense to just go with Azure. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Microsoft, if you've got Microsoft licenses for various other things, such as the Microsoft Dynamics, you would want to go with Microsoft um, because it's um, everything is all together uh, and it's easy to manage. Um, it's easy to control and, and look after um, from that point of view. Um, AWS, I find it's more for like um, people that want to do things like media hosting. I know Netflix is on AWS. Uh, I know companies house use AWS uh, storage S3 for their documents as well. Um, all the, uh, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, they all use AWS. Uh, GCP is really good. I mean, they're, they're all, yeah, they're all like um, Garrett said, if you're into analytics and that sort of thing, then you may want to go with GCP, but Microsoft and AWS do offer those capabilities as well. Um, mm -hmm. So like I said, it's just down to the cost, the service, and uh, what is best suited to um, to where you are and what services you currently want to offer. Yeah. Um, just staying on that, that um, idea of different flavors, um, Barat asks how as a when you're sort of in in role how do you deal with interoperability between those different three different platforms so aws which is the amazon one azure which is the microsoft one and gcp which is the google one ken do you want to take that first sure yeah so what what we see is you don't most clients don't want to kind of link or link all three of them you can actually move from where we've done aws to azure migrations as well um, you can move from one to another. I've, I'm yet to come across a, a company that uses all three because of the way the licensing works, the cost of the um, services, compute storage networking, database, um, files and things like that in the cloud works. So you won't, you would not normally have all three or have two of them. It's very rare. Um, and, and you've got to remember that they're, they're rivals as well. So whilst it is possible, um, you would find that you will end up paying more and you won't get the best service if you have more than one public cloud um, offering um, in your company. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, and so in terms of, uh, sorry, I'll just bring up this comment from Harris. So in terms, uh, this, uh, he's uh, they've already got, um, some AWS, some Azure, and now the Google one, um, in terms of getting started and people asking, how do you get get over that initial, um, if everyone's asking for experience, how do you get that initial experience? Uh, actually, uh, Garad, you, your solution was to give yourself the experience, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um... So um, if you do create like, um, as as from my experience was creating like a portfolio, um, basically listing the projects that you've done. Um, I think from my experience was um, I went through loads of interviews where um, I, I got told um, you don't have enough experience or you're looking for someone slightly more experienced than you. 
um, what tends to happen is um, companies look at someone's um, enthusiasm. Um, mm-hmm. So they'll they'll say, look, this person's done this project, this project. They've done this. They've done that. They've got this certification. They've done they've done this certification. They're willing to um, continue learning. People, mm-hmm. Companies usually would take um, the leap on that particular person. So to Harris, I'd say just um, keep applying, and sooner or later you'll you you will learn something just by by sheer. Uh, pushing pretty, pretty much and it sounded yeah. like you you use your github account which is that um for people not familiar with github it's a service uh where you people share code they share projects that they've worked on and you can sort of look in the back end of someone's project remix yeah. it re- use bits of what they've done it sounds yeah. like you use your github as a bit of a sort of shop front for what you could do and yeah. and as a bit of a showcase for your skills is that right yeah so GitHub's probably the main um, thing that I will do. So you can fully, simply just um, copy and paste that and insert it into your into your CV. So the first thing that a recruit would see, they'd see your LinkedIn, for example. Yeah. They'd see your GitHub. Another thing is I, I'd start using LinkedIn actively as well. So there are loads of recruiters on there, managers, people that are looking for um, enthusiastic um, juniors pretty much. So if you're showcasing your talents, um, you know, it, it will reach the right people eventually. Mm, great. Thank you. Ken, if you've got anything to add, feel free to jump in. Otherwise, I can move on to yeah, another question. Yeah, sure. Um, and, I, and I also say that, um, is this person asking, the person asking, have they actually got any certifications at all? Or uh, sorry, I've taken the question away. I think they do have some certifications, they did, yeah. yes. They, yeah, they um, but okay. just lacking yeah. experience. Yeah, like Garrett said, I mean, LinkedIn's great. Um, you know, just uh, put yourself on LinkedIn. You know, GitHub is a good one as well to put your GitHub profile or link in your CV. Um, but also, I would say um, just just apply. Just look look for jobs and just apply and just talk, read about it. I use a lot of um, uh, cloud training tools uh, such as A Cloud Guru is a good one that I use um, to kind of learn even though you've passed the exam it's always good to refresh yourself uh, and just apply you know go to job sets, uh, sites and apply and you just talk about what you've learned and talk about you know how you think you can make an impact and the things that you think you can bring to the team um yeah you just have to have that enthusiasm and that can do attitude and and that's that's coupled with all the all the all the other things that have been said yeah Amazing, thank you. Um, we are in a in a minute going to be talking about. It sounds like some of these questions for people that already have qualifications. Um, in a minute, we're going to be talking to um, Marina and Kieran from Generation and QA who can help you get those qualifications. Before we do that, Kieran has a question. Um, Ken, you mentioned the solutions architects uh, roles. If you wanted, if if that was your your aim to get to that sort of role, what sort of journey would you recommend to get there? So I would start off um, uh, as a cloud engineer, uh, understand the infrastructure, the basics around compute uh, storage and networking, um, you know, understand how automation and orchestration works. Um, and then you have to be a good communicator because you're, as a solutions architect, you essentially, you'll essentially be talking to customers and you have to be able to understand um, you know, customer requirements, but also, and this is very important, you have to be able to understand difficult customers as well from experience. <laughs> you know, you will get people that are like, no, it doesn't work that way. It's rubbish. Why, how dare you give me that solution? You just have to go, okay, understand where you're coming from, but we will, you know, this is why, how I think it will work and just give your reasons and stick to the point. Um, so you have to be patient. You have to be tolerant. Um, and you have to be able to document as well. So to be able to come up with documentation that is easily understood, be able to use things like Visio, um, Lucid Chart to be able to draw out di- diagrams and things like that. Yeah. So communication is key, but you have to know the technologies inside out by constantly reading and learning, being patient, and just yeah, having that positive mindset as well. Amazing, Garrett. I saw you do a wry smile at the, the mention of uh, difficult customers. Are you? Yeah. Uh, are you? You're currently a cloud engineer. Are you? Is solutions architecture something that appeals to you? Um, potentially, yeah. Um, I'm still in quite new to the industry, I'd say. Um, so I think what I'm what what I'm doing is uh, giving um, a lot lots of importance to um, certifications at the moment myself. So. Mm-hmm. With the Google certifications, I've done the first two, so Cloud Digital Leader and 
uh, associate cloud engineer. So right now I'm giving a focus to um, other certifications like the Terraform certification and the professional um, cloud architects as well for Google Cloud. So that's what, that's what my focus is on at the moment. Amazing. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to go, we've got one more question before we're going to go over to Marina from Generation. Um, uh, Harris uh, is in with another question. Um, should uh, they get more course solution architecture or concentrate on sy systems op operation? Does that make sense to you? SysOps, so Sys system ops. operations, yeah. Operations. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, it depends on what you want. Like if you're a if you're a back end, if you're someone that just likes sitting behind the scenes and building out things, then I wouldn't recommend going uh, moving up the solutions architect role. But if you're someone that likes to be creative in terms of like designing things and showing showcasing what you've done and taking on customer requirements, reviewing it, and then coming back with a solution. Or when a customer is talking and you're already thinking, okay, this is what I, this is how I think it's going to work. I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. And you can talk about it. Then that's, that's what I would, that's, I would recommend, you know, going to as a, a solutions architect position. However, like I said, if you just like to, you don't want to be bothered by, you know, bothered by a difficult customer, or you don't want to sit in front of clients and, and maybe present, uh, to a large audience in terms of findings and things like that, then system operations is, SysOps is basically a part of DevOps kind of, um, then yeah, that would be, uh, it, it, I'm not saying that DevOps and SysOps is also not as rewarding. It is actually very rewarding. Um, it's just for people that just think, you know what, you guys do deal with all the client facing and decision making side of things. I will just do the building just get on with of the work. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just get yeah, the work yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and Garrett, have you, uh, as you've been working in it, has has working in it helped you to figure out whether you're more client facing or more back end um, suited? Um, yeah. Um, the thing is, um, you can't really hide away from client facing <laughs> stuff. Uh, <laughs> So you you always mm -hmm. so whether you like it or not, there will be an opportunity where you're going to be speaking to a client about their particular uh, requirements of the infrastructure anyway. So uh, yeah, and that comes with confidence anyway. So the more the more the more you deal with customers, the easier it does get um, eventually. Mm -hmm. So um, right now, um, I do have the occasional um, client meeting, customer facing meeting. Um, what we've done recently is we've provided um, training to clients um, on things that they'd, they'd like to up, upskill on. So we've been doing that as well. So um, it's a skill that I, I need to develop on as well, which is which is which is mm -hmm. good. So um, yeah, I, I don't really have a preference in terms of sitting behind the scenes and and or talking to clients. You know, um, yeah. I would say it's better to throw yourself into the deep end though. Learn learn that way. Well, it, I mean, the thing that's really striking me from everything both of you are saying is it's um, cloud computing suits someone that wants to be at the forefront uh, and to challenge yourself a lot. And, uh, you know, that's not for everyone, but it sounds like it's really re rewarding um, if if that does describe you. So thank you both so much for, for answering all of those questions and for sharing both of your experiences and the wealth of knowledge that you both have Um if people have more questions, if you don't mind sticking around, um, then then we could bring you back on at the end. But if you have to go, then uh, that's also all good. Thank you so much. Um, sure. And oh yeah, so oh, hang on. Oh, Ken, Ken, <laughs> Ken, <laughs> you were <laughs> gone. Sorry, of cloud computing. Um, it was around the fact that you can work remotely. Oh um, yeah, good point. Which is really good because I work remotely and I you know, the company is not really fussed about going into an office, um, which is great. I mean, um, if you have family, if you've got kids and you've got, you, you know, you've got school runs and things like that, you can actually plan your day around that. So it's mm -hmm. more, it's very rewarding. If if you're a, like a, um, a civil engineer, for example, or a solicitor, you have to go into the offices and things like that. Whereas with the pandemic happening, or you know, three years ago, cloud computing and people that work in cloud computing i can work from anywhere i can work from dubai i can work from you know uh, in spain or whatever as long as i've got mm. internet access you can work so that's that's one of the benefits as well. that and that's so important i um as mm -hmm. as we've uh, all experienced what 
the benefits that home working can bring, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people that really want to uh, continue to take advantage of that. So uh, I'm really glad that you were able to come back on to make that final point. Thank you so much. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, uh, we're going to bring now on. We've mentioned that there are a few different routes in, into the roles. Uh, so we're going to bring on Marina uh, from Generation to talk about uh, one such route in. Hi, Marina. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, generation and we've mentioned this word boot camps. What on earth are we talking about? Um, am I gonna have to do sit-ups and press-ups? Uh, the first answer is yes, you will. Um, <laughs> um, but yes, I'm Marina, I work for a company called Generation. Um, and I'll start with the first question of what is a boot camp? Because we are a skills boot camp provider. Um, at some points, it is a fitness term. Here, we're using it as a training term. So you're taking a lot of hard skills and training and condensing it into a short amount of time um, where you're then applying those skills to, let's say, a job. Um, Generation, more broadly, is we're a non-for-profit that offers these skills um, training opportunities to get people into sustainable employment. So we have a couple of different options here today. We're speaking about tech um, and cloud more specifically. Um, so what happens on one of our boot camps? Well, it's a, a mix of hard skills. So you're learning hard skills that you would need for the job. Um, at the end, in this case, a cloud practitioner, as well as soft skills. So some of the other speakers have mentioned um, confidence, teamwork, communication. That's also a big part of what we do on boot camp um, to get folks as employment ready as possible. At the end of our boot camps, we have a partnerships team that works with you for up to six months to um, help secure employment into entry level, junior level um, cloud roles. So they work with you um, to help ensure that what you're learning on bootcamp is then being translated into employment. Um, so a couple of, oh, do you have a question? I no, 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 go for it, go for it. Great, so a couple of options from us. We have two different um, cloud bootcamps that we run. Um, one of them is Google Cloud. Um, so that's working with uh, the Google Cloud platform. It's a 12 week boot camp. Um, I see the code there. Um, it's going to be a 12 week boot camp starting in August for us. Um, and then we also have an AWS restart program. So Amazon Web Services um, boot camp as well. That one will actually be a 16 week part time boot camp. Um, so Monday to Friday still, but 9 to 2.30. Um, and very similar, just on different, um, just on different platforms there. Um, the, the, um, the application dates though, I know the AWS one is fast approaching, like very, very fast now. Indeed, indeed. If you are interested in AWS, um, we are closing applications today, which is a little bit of a rush here, not to not to stress anyone. But if you are, um, just give me maybe an email, I'll pop my email um, down in the comment section. Just let me know if you're applying and I can definitely help support you. And then the Google, um, we have quite a bit more time there. It starts August, um, at the end of August there, August 24th. Um, and yes, so the how kind of the boot camps run, they're every day, full, um, Monday to Friday, the AWS one part-time, the Google one full-time. Um, and you have uh, certified instructors from industry as well as a mentor on course with you as well. Amazing. Um, yeah, talking very quickly about kind of eligibility, I noticed that was a question kind that of earlier question on. That was from Vic Versa, yeah, thank you. There we go. Um, so I'll touch on that. So for Generation, um, because as a charity, we're really focused on removing barriers um, for people entering employment, whatever those may be. Um, our eligibility is quite broad. We're looking at folks who are 18 plus living in a London borough, the right to live and work in the UK and not in employment training or education. There's some um, times we'll take part-time employment, but those kinds of um, things are uh, outlined in more specificity on the website. Mm -hmm. But more broadly, we're, we're not looking for anyone, we're not looking for any sort of education or work experience. What we're really looking for is those folks that are going to have the mindset that are uh, that is going to help them succeed. So we talked about, um, or the previous speakers talked about enthusiasm, wanting to be in that profession and that resilience piece and wanting to learn more. That's really what we're in that. 
Oh, uh, you went a bit um, glitchy. Um, so I, I no, no, no. Uh, hey, the internet. Mm -hmm. um, but but what I what I heard you saying was sort of echoing what Ken and Garrett had shared about uh, the um, the enthusiasm, sh demonstrating that willingness to learn, demonstrating that willingness to always be at the forefront of technical developments. That and and sort of thinking about how you can demonstrate that rather than any sort of previous coding experience or any tech specific technical knowledge that you're looking for exactly and yeah. those things don't exclude you from applying just um just one of the it will just be um one of the factors kind of yeah great and there's actually a, a question from bavica uh, kind of building on what you've just said if i already have a cloud pr practitioner certification am i eligible for a boot camp Yep. So having a certification wouldn't make you ineligible. Um, I will say that as part of the boot camp, you do um, uh, you do get uh, you uh, do the exam. So for uh, Google Cloud, you'll do the Google one. For the um, Amazon Web Services, you'll do the Amazon one. So that will be a part of the boot camp. Great, perfect, thank you. Um, and uh, you mentioned sharing your email address, uh, Ronan, if we could have that on screen now, please. Um, there we go. Uh, um, uh, don't forget, if you're watching this, you can pause uh, the video on any of the links or emails that we've shared to allow you to time to write them down. Um, as well, we've had another couple of questions in. Um, uh, a Abdullah says, is a job guaranteed after completing the AWS bootcamp? Great question. Um, so no, we don't guarantee a job. Um, our team, you still have to interview and the, the company still does have to hire you. What we do is get you as as ready as possible to start. So the way we design the boot camp is by boot camps is by working with employers to see what skills they're looking for and then designing our curriculum around that. And then our partnerships team runs multiple with you already, but also how to present in interviews, how to highlight your skills. So we do try to get you as close as ready as possible. Our team also does help line up interviews, does uh, matchmaking days with employers, as well as helping you on that self-guided work search as well. And uh, Generation has a, a what sort of placement rates are sort of how many six months after finishing the boot camp? Yeah, so there these they're going to really depend on the boot camp um, and the time of the year. For 2022, we've placed 75% of people into sustainable employment. Um, so these are jobs with progression opportunities. Amazing. Um, we've had a question from Maria. Can you apply for one bootcamp course six months after completing one in a different field? So this is going to be a little bit more nuanced because it would depend on who you did the course with um, and funding requirements and things like that. For kind of that level of specificity, I just reach out to me um, because it would depend on who was funded, who was funding it. Also, if you would um learn anything new those are all kinds of the nuances that would go into that answer amazing and then one final question for you before i let you go is the google uh, practitioner um boot camp a full-time course it is indeed so monday to friday nine to five and it, all of our boot camps are done remotely um we're happy to provide laptops and wi-fi for anyone who needs them Amazing. Thank you so much for uh, your contributions. Uh, we may well get in more questions. I may be dragging you back on, on screen. Um, but thank you so much. We're going to hand over now to Kieran from QA. Hi. Hi, Kieran. How are you? Yeah, all good. All good. Excellent. Thank you for having me. Um, no, thank you so much for contributing. Um, so tell us a little bit about QA and uh, We've been talking a lot about cloud. How much does QA love cloud? <laughs> uh, well, QA, number one, is uh, one of the largest uh, tech apprenticeship providers in the UK. And we love everything tech. We, we have apprenticeships. We have our skills boot camps, which are very similar to Generation. And we also have um, our Teach the Nation to Code days as well. So we, we provide lots of different sort of avenues for people to come and find out about not only cloud, but also um, other sort of avenues of tech as well. Um, Amazing. Perhaps if I just quickly tell about Teach the Nation to Code to start with. Yeah, that's, uh, that sounds like a great place to start. Yeah, so they're really great and they're, they're great for anyone who wants to dip a toe into tech uh, and find out whether or not it's for them. So it's called Teach the Nation to Code. It's online and we do them every Saturday. They're on different topics each time. 
and you can find them really easily if you just type in Teach the Nation to Code on um, Google. There'll be Eventbrite that comes up and it'll have all our latest ones that you can sign up. They're completely free. They're really fun and they're well worth getting involved with. Um, we might do some in-person ones as well later on this year. But for now, I'd say check out the virtual ones because they they always get really um, rave reviews. Amazing. Um, but you mentioned that QA also has some cloud boot camps. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, absolutely. So we do ICT cloud um, boot camps and they're really great. in very similar format to Generation. So I won't bore you all with the same details. The differences are ours are part time for 12 weeks. So it's um, essentially you should be able to do part time work around it. And there's this work that you would do on a program called Cloud Academy, which you can do in your own time. And you'll all get a Cloud Academy license for one year. So you'll be able to continue to upskill yourself even after the boot camp with our Cloud Academy license. We actually have a course starting in June and then the next ones will be this autumn. So I'd say definitely worth if you're interested um showing your interest now you can go onto our website and, and basically express interest and it's really simple a recruiter will be in touch to talk to you about it but just to go over sort of the brief things that you'll learn there's cloud fundamentals microsoft azure fundamentals network and cloud network security device and application management and service management and intro to DevOps as well. So Amazing. you cover lots of really interesting things. If you are thinking about going down that route, it's well worth looking into. Yeah, fabulous. I'm going to put the uh, link on screen now. Um, uh, yeah, tell us, um, you mentioned that there are apprenticeships. Are there apprenticeships in cloud or are your apprenticeships covering different different subjects? So at the moment, we don't have any live apprenticeships in cloud. However, it's always worth signing up for sort of notifications or if just constantly checking our website because that updates daily uh, depending on what comes through the system um, but what I'd say is we are the number one sort of like one of the largest providers in the UK for tech apprenticeships for a reason uh, and we we love to do it and it's something that we're, we're experts in so I'd say get in get in touch with us and have a look at what we have you could do a boot you, I mean you could do all three you could do a teach the nation to code then an apprenticeship oh, sorry a boot camp then an apprenticeship um, mm. And that could be a really good journey for somebody who's starting out day one, or you mm. could go straight to a boot camp, or you could even go straight to an apprenticeship. The, I mean, it's a nice journey throughout all of them, um, although some people might feel that prepared straight away to go to an apprenticeship. So everyone's yeah. different, right? Uh, and there's a yeah. different journey for everyone. Amazing. Um, and uh, uh, obviously, we had a few questions about eligibility. Um, it'd be great to just briefly confirm uh, those are the same for the AQA boot camp. So if, um, what about job? So there was a question also about job, if a job's guaranteed after your boot yeah. camps. Tell us a little bit about QA's so, approach to that. So it's not guaranteed. You never know. You might do a course and hate it, or you might, <laughs> dare I say, be terrible at it. <laughs> you never know. It's not, it's not terrible. I'm terrible at coding, so I can say that I would, would not be great at it. Um, it. Do you know what? When you come at the end of the boot camp, we want you to get into work, and we will also spend six months with you trying to support you into that position. It will be require a lot of effort from yourselves as well because you'll have to go to interviews, you'll have to make sure your CV's up to scratch, but we will give you that support as well. We'll give you those what we call green skills support, and that would be around uh, interview skills, CV skills, confidence boosting. And we found that that sort of formula seems to really work for our candidates of getting into work. Um, we're really lucky as well because we are such a big provider. We have connections with some amazing companies, and so hopefully we'll be able to support you into employment. Amazing. Uh, and Simnom asks, what's the name of the QA Cloud Bootcamp on your website, please? Yeah, it's called ICT Cloud. Amazing. So if you express interest in one of the boot camps, um, you can get in touch when they get in touch with you, a recruiter, you can then say, actually, it's the ICT Cloud that I'm really interested in. And they'll be able to guide you to the availability and try and book you on. Perfect. Is there anything else uh, you were just going to run through the eligibility criteria for? Oh, yeah, today? absolutely. Um, you have to live in England, you have to be 19 plus, um, ideally you've been in the UK for the last three years, um, and that's essentially it. We're, we're looking for people that are wanting for, we want people who are going to want to get into work at the end of it. So 
it's really important that that is on your mind and that is something that you want to do with these skills afterwards um just because otherwise it just means it's a shame for us at the end it's a shame for you if, if you don't actually want to go into work if you change your mind that's completely okay but uh, come into the day one thinking actually i'd love to go towards a tech career yeah amazing and i'm going to put you on the spot to see this is your qa yeah. test how well do you know your employer uh, yeah. can you tell us what areas you currently have apprenticeships in barat you're oh you're testing him you're testing him Gosh. yeah so we have it support we have data apprenticeships we have it technical we have software developer apprenticeships uh, we have networking apprenticeships we have cybersecurity apprenticeships we have a whole whole bunch and, and the, the salaries really range. You know, we have had ones before which have up to 30K. So, mm -hmm. you know, it really does depend on where you where you are in the UK. And, and yeah, we absolutely have loads and then definitely have a look on our website. Barra, I will leave it to you to decide whether Kieran was cheating and reading <laughs> off a screen. I totally was cheating. I'll be, I'll be <laughs> right Amazing. Thank you so much for your contribution. You're welcome. Um, I'm just going to uh, share a couple uh, more bits. So um, we've mentioned a couple of times. Oh, hang on. I'm going to put our, our screen. Um, uh, we've mentioned that uh, there are lots of different ways to support you into roles in cloud. If you have the qualifications that uh, Kenneth and uh, Garad were already talking about, but you're struggling to, um, to access, that might be because you need some support with your CV, with your um, interview practice um, that all comes as part of the the boot camps that we've been talking about but if you don't need a boot camp and you just need that support with your cv and your interview then please do consider the generation career support at hub.careers slash support uh, that's uh, free for anyone uh, living in london who isn't currently in education uh, or training and is over 18 and also uh, the Young Professionals course from the Youth Employment UK has um, an online resource called uh, Journeys to Work, um, hub.careers slash YP Journey, uh, which is a, an online course for you to complete at your leisure to help you to support you into um, uh, an exciting new role. Um, if all of this, you've got to the end, you've made it to the end of this uh, uh, show and you're thinking, actually, this is all far too advanced for me. I need something that's going to help me a bit a bit earlier in the journey, then please do also consider the short courses from Catch-22. Uh, they can give you an introduction into diff different uh, careers. They also offer some of that employability support with CV and uh, cover letters. You get some work experience or, or some work, um, not necessarily work experience, it's, it's sort of um, work-based uh, activities and, and trials. Um, they're supported by Microsoft and Salesforce. Um, so uh, they would be worth checking out as well. And finally, don't forget to check out the hub.careers uh, slash home website, which is the website of the London Digital Jobs and Skills Hub. I just wanted to finish on a really lovely note, uh, which is our viewer cams uh, said that they joined the Generation Bootcamp almost four years ago and has been in employment ever since. And uh, that they wanted to echo that having the right mindset, a growth mindset and a willingness and wanting to learn uh, is the key. Uh, I thought that was such a lovely note to finish on um, because it really echoes everything that we've heard today about how cloud computing really can suit people that want to stay ahead and stay uh, stay up to date. Um, I hope that this has helped you today and given you lots of avenues for further exploration. Um, please don't uh, hesitate to get in touch with the um, the London Hub, if we can help you at all. Uh, my huge thanks to uh, Marina, to Kieran, to Kenneth and to Garad, and oh, as always to Ronan behind the scenes for his help. Um, thank you so much. And uh, I hope we hear from you soon. Best of luck in your onward career journey.